Hey everyone, today we're diving into asynchronous JavaScript by learning everything about promises and async await, key concepts for writing asynchronous code in JavaScript. I remember when I first tried to understand promises in JavaScript, it wasn't easy at all. That's why I want to help you to learn it the easy way. So let's go. Have you ever noticed your code not executing in the order you expect? That could have happened because some parts of your code executed asynchronously in the background. But what is asynchronous code? Usually JavaScript code runs one line of code after another. This is called synchronous. Async code run in the background and the program does not wait for it before it runs the next line of code. Traditionally, async JavaScript was achieved by using callbacks. A callback is a function which is passed as an argument to another function and gets called when the async operation finished. So the caller of the async operation can decide what happens once the async code is executed. Take a look at this simple example. The built-in setTimeout function is a way to make JavaScript wait for a little before doing something. In this case, we are making it wait for 1000 milliseconds or 1 second and then we print a message to the console. The setTimeout function has two parameters. The first one is the callback and the second one is the timeout in milliseconds. The callback gets invoked after the specified number of milliseconds has passed. Using callbacks extensively can lead us straight into the so-called callback hell. The callback hell is when we have so many layers of callbacks that it gets almost impossible to understand the flow of the program. Take a look at this example to understand the callback hell. Crazy, right? To avoid the callback hell, we can use promises. A promise represents the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation. It's like a promise in the real world. It promises that some code gets asynchronously executed in the future and either succeeds or fails. Here we are creating a new promise and we name it my promise. Now this promise needs two things to work, a resolve function and a reject function. Resolve is what we call if everything goes well. It's like saying, yes, I kept my promise. Reject on the other hand is what we call if things go wrong, like sorry, I couldn't do it. Now within the set timeout function, we have a variable called success that is set to true. So after one second, we check the value of success, if it's true, we call the resolve function, but if success is false, we call reject instead. Now we will have a look how to handle the result of a promise. The then method is used to handle the result if the promise resolved and the catch method is used to handle the result if the promise rejected. Both then and catch get a function as an argument. This function has one parameter which is the value we have passed into the resolve or reject call. So if the promise is successful, let's print the message to the console by using console.log and if it got rejected, let's use console.error to print the error message but chaining multiple then calls can still get messy. That's where async await comes in. Async and await are like a simpler way to work with promises. Instead of using then and catch to handle what happens when a promise is done, async lets us write code that looks more straightforward and easier to read. Let's define our first async function. We can make a function asynchronous by using the async keyword before the function keyword. In this function, Await pauses the execution until my promise is resolved or rejected. This makes the code easier to read and maintain. The try part is where we attempt to run some code that might take some time or could go wrong. In this case, we are waiting for my promise to finish using await and storing the result in the variable called message. If my promise succeeds, we lock the message to the console. But if something goes wrong, maybe the promise fails, then we jump straight to the catch part. This is where we handle the error, so our program doesn't crash. We simply lock the error to the console with console.error. So in short, try is for when things go right and catch is for when they go wrong, similar to then and catch when working with promises. Now let's look at a real world example using the fetch API. Here we are fetching to do items from an example API. We await the response and then await the parsing of the JSON data, which is the response of the API call. If there is an error at any point, it gets caught in the catch block. Sometimes basic promises aren't enough. There are several features which help us to achieve complex stuff with promises. For example, waiting for multiple promises to resolve. That brings us to promise.all. Suppose you have multiple asynchronous tasks 
that can run concurrently. We can use promise.all to wait for all of the promises to resolve. So in this example, we create an array with three promises fetching data from an URL. We use promise.all to handle them together. It waits for all three promises to complete and then gives us their values as an array. We simply log this array to the console. If any of these promises had failed, promise.all would go straight to the catch block and we'd seen an error message instead. This is a simple way to handle multiple promises at once. Promise.all settled waits for all the promises to finish, but it doesn't matter whether they succeed or fail. Promise.all waits for all of the promises to succeed, and Promise.all settled just waits for all of the promises to finish. When all the promises are done, it gives us an array of results. Each result tells us the status of the promise, either fulfilled if it succeeded or rejected if it failed. Okay, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. To support my work, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any content about learning to code. So have a great day and see you next time.